Uh, very happy morning to all of you. Wiki Karnataka, the Special Need Council is back again today, April 2nd, the Autism Awareness Day. We wanted to do something differently. So here we present to you two wonderful boys, amazing boys, very talented, talking about their passion, talking about what they like to do, talking about their autism brain also. I'm in touch, I'm in conversation with Sense Kaleidoscope, the co-founders, Anima Nair and Akshay Shetty. So let us dive into their journey, their lives. Thank you so much, all of you. And it's so heartening to see so handsome you both are and you're just sitting there. Can, can you introduce yourself? I do not know your names. So Shalini, I am Pranam Nayar. So uh, um, I do arts and uh, I do group class uh, every day. And I also do gallery work by using a rotary pen. So I like to work harder and also I can do portfolio work. So I feel happy. So my friend Arnik also likes to come uh, to art class, but he likes to draw uh, farm lens. So okay. he's smart. Yeah, I'm smart, oh. Salim. <laughs> Wow, that's so nice to hear. And, and introduce yourself. Hi, Salini. My name is Salini. Anik Savar Panuli. Lovely to meet you, Pranav and Anik. So much. Uh, hi, everyone. So, we are here at Sense Kaleidoscopes with our two young men who are eager to talk to you on the occasion of World Autism Awareness Day. So, we would like for their voices to be heard on this very special day so that the so that everyone out there knows what exactly goes on here at Sense Kaleidoscopes with art and autism and all the fantastic fun we're having. And so over on to you guys. Introduce yourselves, please. Hi, I am Pranav Nayak. I'm 21 years old. I'm good at studying at Sense Kaleidoscopes. And I do lots of work so I can earn money and uh, do all artworks and uh, do <coughs> more drawing work on something. Excellent. Uh, hi, my name is Anik Sabah Pandit. I'm 14 years old and, and I, did, I did woodworking in Saskatchewan School. school. And, I and, and I did the, I did the work in the data and uh, entry that they just uh, they, they taught, taught me. And then we were watching 80 people. Okay, what if, let's talk a little bit about what all you guys do in the class. Oh. Do you want to tell them? So, Anik, you were talking to them about what happens in the class. So, what are the subjects that you're doing in the class? Yeah. Can you tell me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you study? Uh, I studied math, math, mm -hmm. uh, drama, mm -hmm. uh, math, drama, based mm -hmm. by news, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. art. Data entry, literature, uh, art, science. science. So we're doing all of these, right? Yeah. Okay. And what grade are you preparing for? Uh, I prepare 10th grade. Excellent. You're so doing 10th grade, isn't yeah. it? Tana, what, what are the some of the activities that you would like to do in this case? Can you tell them? Some of the activities I like to do in the Sanskrit scripts, I like to do uh, pottery work also in the Sanskrit scripts, and uh, I also like to use the pottery to make a pot uh, in a clay class along with uh, uh, puni also. I like to do that. I also to study uh, in the class, like uh, like how Anik said, I like to do comprehension work, mm -hmm. uh, great ten uh, home science. Mm -hmm. I like to do uh, great ten literature, mm -hmm. uh, question and answer, 
and I would also like to do grain processing. Excellent. And what what about other activities? What do you guys do for fun in the in the classroom? For fun, uh, I like to uh, show the arts. So. And uh, I like to understand uh, and uh, discuss about uh, the different series. So um, I like to know what happened uh, in the different series. Also. Why do you like different series? And you can give me a copy. So I put it in the way that it's okay. To watch uh, Why? Why? Because. series which is in Netflix. Okay, so, uh, Anik, what is it typical about? It's a story of... Uh, it's a story of... Uh, story uh, is, is, is an episode. Yes, but it is whose story? It's a story of a clown? <laughs> no. Hip hop. No, story, no. <laughs> story of Sam. Who's Sam? Sam? Sam is a name of a Sam boy. Sam. He's 18 years old. Okay, and does he have a logical brain or does he have... What is the story about? Uh, Pranav, let, let Pranav answer that. Pranav, that, what, is, what is special about uh, Sam? So Sam has uh, autism mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Sam already uh, saw what Paige was doing in uh, Sam's house and uh, uh, what uh, uh, bad thing uh, Sam did. Mm -hmm. Sam, uh, put page in the uh, closet also oh, good and uh, Sam did the wrong thing also yeah but then did he say sorry after that he did not apologize to page why did he put page in the closet but uh, the thing so even is uh, not like a floor only can put the <laughs> <in> the <closet. laughs> okay, thank you thank you for that <laughs>
empathy and uh, uh, my brain helps me to think of some thing uh, about to have me uh, not to work and uh, my brain also uh, reminds me to think about the green monsoon uh, <laughs> you think at that time. <laughs> I know, I know. I think your brains, you guys have very, very interesting brains. I, you guys do a lot of lot of good things with your brains like dates. You always remind me about everybody's birthday, don't you? Yeah. Akshay, always forget dates. Yeah. Oh. Always. Yeah. Do you guys forget dates? Ah, uh, date, no. No, I have not seen you guys forget dates. Very You're very good, good with math. Yeah. Yeah, Akshay cannot do math as nicely as you. Oh. That's why Akshay makes mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody yeah. always makes mistakes. Yeah, and it's a correct the mistake. Yes, yes, it's okay. all right. right to make mistakes because we learn from them and we can correct them. Yeah? Yeah. 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 What's your thing, Anima, ma'am? Absolutely right. And what about all the events that we do? What about all the shows that we've been to? Yeah. You want to talk to answer yeah. that question? Have you gone to shows, Pranav? You've done the shows. Why don't you answer the question? You remember the shows we went to? The art show? Go. We went to so many places, no? For yeah. Sure. yeah. And? You like the shows? Can yeah, you tell us like something about it? Yeah. I like that uh, exhibition. Mm -hmm. So when uh, somebody uh, called me, I went there to uh, check on the, the card and there's oh, a Lord. my in uh, front of my room. Yes! Yes, I can I remember the card show? Yeah. You were talking to everybody? Taj was Generally. Yes. That's what they want. Yeah. So, yeah, yes. I uh, like to talk to many people. Yeah. yeah. About? A bit louder, a bit. Oh. More uh, compulsion by doing uh, so many uh, time by using scale or so. Everything I could tell them. Yes, I know. I know. It's for your art. And do you remember your artworks went to Paris? Do you remember that? Yeah. How did you feel at that time? I feel very... Uh, very sad. I feel so sad that we I... We can talk about that also. I feel uh, excitement also. I know you were excited. Yeah, and you were looking the, forward to come to Paris, the right? The TV channel yes. interview. Yeah. Oh, the TV interview yeah. you guys did. All of you were there. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. You in News <laughs> 9 or something? Yes, yeah. So, yeah, we were all of News 9. Wasn't that such an exciting time? Yes, do. That just and might be yeah. good idea. It's all because of your autism brains that we were able to do all of that. Yes, you yeah. know, wonderful art that you may have behind you. Yeah. Isn't this fascinating how that well your brains work and how proud you should be of your brains? Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. So tell me, tell me something, tell me something else now. We spoke about the art and everything. When the COVID happened and we were all at home, yeah. did you yeah. enjoy being at home? No. Or do you like coming to school? I, I like coming to school. school. Yeah. Uh, come back to school. Why? Why do you want to come to school? Because I want to study and do more. So I can earn money and uh, don't want friends. So all well, friends are useless. I also want to <laughs> have my friends. So you guys like coming and being with friends, or you don't like? Are you want to be sitting alone at home? No, I like friends too. Also, um, like friends when friends feel uh, upset also. Yeah. So you you like people coming and talking to you here also. We have a lot of people yes. come and visit you guys, no? Yes. And how do you feel when people come into the classroom and uh, they are meeting you and talking to you? I feel people? happy. Yeah. Do you want to do more of that? Yeah. You want more people to come and meet you? Yes. You should say that. You should say I, I, that. I, I like invite it. everybody. Why don't you look at the camera? Everyone, please uh, come and meet us. Yeah. I like more people to come to I meet me. Yes. yes. People to come and. <laughs> Meet us. Yeah, visit the school so that we will have a very nice. Okay. Um. So thank you, guys. Thank, thank you so much. much. Yes. Thank yeah. you so Great much. Great job. High five. Nice. Yes. We are very very proud of both of you. There. Yeah. No. 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 Anik. Anik. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right. I I never. How wonderful it was to hear from the two boys.
wonderful, it was right. But what goes behind it? Can we have a very candid, a very open discussion? And I think they, these two ladies are all ready for it. So thank you so much, the co-founders of Sense Kaleidoscope again, Akshay Seti and Anima Nair. We always have, uh, when we talk about autism, what comes to our mind is about their special abilities. And when we say special abilities, what actually is always seen, they're either good at art, they're good at music. You have actually taken it to a new dimension, I would say. What, what brought you together? And also, you have taken art into a, into a very big, big way. Please, please let us know about how did it happen and when did it start and how is it going? Okay, so I'll take that one. Um, so Shalini, um, Akshay and I started this organization in um, late 2012, but officially early 2013. So we've been around for nine years, a little bit more than nine years. And the reason we started the space is because there was simply no space that we knew of that would take in a child with autism and then see what we can do with that child's play. There was always, there were more than enough places, like parents would split, I went from school to school. You are a parent, you would know about this whole journey that we all take. We go from school to school to find a school that would appreciate our child instead of constantly putting our child down and saying, he can't do this, she can't do that. What, what will we do with him? You have to work with him on this. Instead of that, we wanted to create an environment where every child is celebrated for what he can do. It is not about, oh, you do the smallest thing and everybody will sit in class. That's not the point. It is what is it that is driving you? What interests you? What motivates you? You want to bring that out in strength. And Akshay has used the medium of art to do that. There are many other ways to do it, but art kind of flows very naturally with the autism brain is something that um, has been studied. It's been proven before as well. The, difference that we have made with sense kaleidoscopes is we have done this in a completely different way we have made our art training program a professional art healing program and the reason we were able to do that is the autism art autism specific art curriculum and academic curriculum that we have been and continue to develop so i let actually talk more about the curriculum because that is the backbone of all our programs and that is how mm -hmm. we managed the kind of success stories you were talking about those amazing exhibitions, the fantastic artworks, and all of that recognition we got from the Kochi Binale from Paris, from so many exhibitions in Bangalore, and the artworks that you've seen personally when you came to the school. So the secret behind all of that is the curriculum and how we work with it. And that's what I let Akshay talk about. Yeah, I think Anwar captured it. Primarily, it is a strength-based curriculum. That's what she was trying to say when she said that we work with what really motivates them, what really drives them. Now, when you're working with children and you say that I'm going to work with something that drives them, then you have to be willing to put yourself out there and say, all right, I am going to be led by this child. At that time, there is no deficit in your mind. Yeah. You know, the lack perspective, as we call it, that does not, that does not come here. All you're doing is you're being guided by that child you're looking at the challenges that are being posed to him with the kind of brain he has. And then you're trying to solve those challenges in the best way possible so he can engage with that stuff and learn and grow potentially. So I think that's what we have done. That is why the curriculum design that we speak about, we say that it's built by neurodiverse minds. It's a strength-based curriculum. It will look at, you know, taking you from one level to the other, but doing it very incrementally with minimal pressure, understanding the sense or actually being sensitive to the needs of the person so that you're not pushing them off the edge. And that's really what we have done with the curriculum. That's where we have put our, I think, heart and soul in building it. It has always been about the child for us. So whatever you're seeing is part of the process, right? You start with a process and you have a clear intention in your mind. If you say, I'm going to do anything and everything that is going to benefit this child and adapt to this child, then you will get the necessary impact through the process. And I guess that's, that's what you you see when you look at our story. But the one important fact that we haven't discussed with you yet is how our existing education system is 
creating a huge comprehension lag for us. If the existing schools cannot help the children, they have to admit that early on so that the parents can then go on and approach real professionals who can help them in the task. Because we get children at the age of 15 who have a comprehension level of maybe a five-year-old or six-year-old. And Shalini, you know, that huge gap. How are we supposed to close that? If, yeah. You know, how closing that gap? You cannot give them a rounded or holistic education. It's very difficult. How do we create sustainable livelihoods when the gap is so huge? And why are we not addressing that problem at the root? Because we can create success stories in art, but it takes a lot of work. And if yeah. we had the added value of proper comprehension, yes, it would have been flying by now. We are happy with our success to a measure, but to a larger measure, we're not happy. We want more. We know our children deserve more. And I believe that instead of looking at autism like it's a perennial disability, understand that it's a system that are let down. Understand yes. that we are letting them down and with proper help, with proper infrastructure, with proper government support. You know, you can't even cross the road in Bangalore. Why? Why can't you cross the road in Bangalore? Because it's not automated. You don't have your pedestrian walking thing which you could have in any other country, right? So things like that make disability a bigger pain than it needs to be. We are creating dependence. We are not creating independence young men and women when, from, who have the background of autism and who are living the challenge of social yeah thank you so much it brings about two perspectives right all the decisions are made in the boardroom with people who are not seeing the struggle isn't it this is how it is does it come down trickle down to somebody who's suffering me and you and so many others it doesn't right so two perspectives first let me talk about the positive perspective which akshay to uh, talked about so you look at the child and the child is the boss in my counseling sessions, when I take counseling and when I introduce myself and I talk about how would I work, I always tell my counselee that you are going to be the boss of my sessions. You will guide me and follow you. And this is what you are doing. The moment you say that, I see my neurotypical, you know, the, the, the labels, the counselee, I just see an instant face. They just feel very empowered. They don't feel that they are going to somebody with a disability or with a disorder. They just feel very empowered. So as, as Akshay said, then looking at the gap, she just complements with her skills and what the child has. And then the process of, you know, as the process continues forward, maybe the small deficits and they get filled. Then comes the lacuna with the child, right? The lacuna of those gaps, the lacuna of comprehension, the lacuna of maybe the social skills. And can we create a school at home? We cannot, right? So then are we giving a shout out to the schools? Let us give actually, right? Are, 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 we, are we not talking a lot about inclusion? Is it happening? I have a lot of parents reaching out to me. 95% of them, not at all happy. So what is happening? Everything is happening on the social media. If everything is happening on so-called platforms, everything is happening on the CSR platforms trickles down to nothing, right? How can we do it? Maybe, maybe these conversations, I'm going to definitely circulate it everywhere because this is what it is, right? So thank you so much for being very honest. I'm always vocal about things. And, and when we get voices together, which is experiencing, which is working towards, working against so many systems, I think we feel empowered. So thank you so much. On a positive note, the negative to the positive again, you have created masterpieces you have i have seen the moment i had walked in i was like can i click a picture and my camera was on and on and on because i did not want to miss anything and i was completely as i'm talking again i'm getting goosebumps trust me i was like is it and is it done by somebody human leave about the label it was so so magnificent how do you get them to do this Okay, and as you are talking, the audience will be thinking, what are they talking about? Their imagination. We we'll definitely will have a video showcasing the masterpieces by then. But how do you get them to do it? So I'll take that, and I want you to like. It was interesting. You started with the with the term inclusion. You know, it's a very empowering term, and I'm I'm going to try and connect it to what is the end product, the masterpieces that you're talking about. How do we do this? Look, what is Tense Kaleidoscope? It's a space that has been created to let 
the individual know that we accept you for who you are how you are what you are where you are irrespective when i started this space with anima at that point in time i told her that it's going to be about the child it's not going to be about and she had her experiences as a parent going in different spaces through her i when i came back from scotland and i worked for that short period of one and a half two years in different special schools i was disillusioned about what was happening over here i did not want to continue being in the space even though my qualification gave me the right to possibly be in the space much more than anybody else but at the end of the day it's about harming or helping the child and i was very clear that i would do nothing that will harm the child if i cannot help the child i will walk away so that's when i had the conversation with anima and we started the space so it was important for the space to ensure that it would make the person feel accepted when we talk about this artwork when we talk about essentially about artwork or essentially about any kind of performance right it's a, it's a, it's an expression right you can write a piece of you can write a story you can write a poem you can whatever a human being does cognitively is a piece of expression human expression yeah. now a human will express only even for that matter our uh, you know non verbal cues our communication with that mechanism you may not understand mm-hmm. mechanical non verbal cues very easily but that is also expression now when you see a human being who is going to be i mean for the lack of the fact that i can't define it in any other way and keeping it short when you say aggressive this is an aggressive person or this is a person who is not able to adapt i go back to questioning what has the environment done to help him or enable him when people tell me oh wow actually these amazing artworks i say it is part of the environment it's about how you design the environment around that person and how he feels or she feels in that environment and that is being expressed in the artwork hmm. if you come into my space when we are actively working i during covid i had kids calling me and crying and saying my god we can't we can't manage being at home we want to be back out there if we don't have that then these masterpieces are not going to be possible i have seen parents put their children into regular schools with the hope that they will integrate or they will learn from their peers you know i find it really really weird because and that is it's actually very simple you know logically supposing i have i have depression and anima doesn't what are the chances that she's going to understand what i'm going through i would say very minimal and what are the chances that i'm going to be influenced by her to behave like her again very minimal so you yeah. you by you by you taking your child who has a different brain and saying that i i appreciate you for this brain that you have you're taking him you're putting him in the middle of neurotypical and you're saying be like them but why logically it does not make sense to me as a human being as to why i have to be like somebody who i cannot connect with and i'm not saying that you will never be able to connect with us obviously we all have different minds we all have different perspectives and we come from probably different cultural backgrounds eventually we connect and the reason we eventually connect is because i am respected for who i am so are you but are we giving that to our children do we respect them for who they really are or are we always putting them under this microscope and we think ah this is not okay it's about you the way you're standing is not okay the way you're sitting is not okay the way you're talking is not okay and i'm always in, in correction mode and don't clap your hands you know you're always in correction mode so i think many in short these masterpieces are coming because my students are happy being where they are but i do like while we are talking about the positive thing i think it's not easy i want to make that very very open because yeah. I, even now sustainability is a big big question for my current artists as well i had an artist who was so brilliant and went into depression because his pattern broke his sister went away to study abroad something so simple that was something he could not adjust to make a transition over there and he really struggled now i will go back to why where is the survival skill we have pulled off the survival skill from this individual how is that education to be very honest there is no primary secondary higher education in the country for autism that it is not there it it it's a yeah. lie if we had that education in place do you think that a child cannot make a transition if a person walks out of the house to study it's a positive thing right it's a positive yeah. thing but he does not understand that that means whatever i done with him i have disabled him further yeah we are trying to fit them in right we just keep trying to fit them in then 
making a, an environment which accepts them as they are, right? Isn't it? It's not, and when you say environment, it's not just the environment, right? I'm not saying, okay, the child and all of them just accept him for how he is, who is, and leave it. But that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying, build your systems around it. Oh, the bigger picture, yes. Yes, it's the bigger, it's always the bigger picture because see, we're talking about sustainability of a human mm -hmm. being's life yes. over here. It's not going to end at 20. It's not going to end at 16. Where is your system to help him cope with the complications that he's going to have at the age of 45? See, you know, many parents come to me and say, I would like to be a friend to my child. I say, please stop. <laughs> you know, don't. And I'll tell you why. I'm not against you having a friendly relationship with your child, but you are a parent. Your task is to prepare him. He doesn't have the mature. You can't be a friend and at the age of 10, I start talking to my child about the problems and having with my husband. He does not have the maturity to deal with it. So what's yeah. my task? My task is to be the parent so that I can help him understand how to grow incrementally with those pressures and how to cope with those pressures so that at some point in time, he will be able to manage it. We are not doing that. So I would come back to not just the schooling system, the parenting that we are doing over here. Though all of that comprises environment. Every interaction, the social pressures that they are going through. I have youngsters who don't have access to girlfriends. I think that's a crime. If you meet yeah. anybody 11 years old today, they are talking to me about neurotypical children, telling me that they have boyfriends and girlfriends. Here I have 18-year-old, 21-year-old boys who are seeking companionship and they can't find it. So when I say environment, all of this matters. You know, we are doing the mm -hmm. best that we can to keep them happy. But I will be honest, we are not succeeding completely because it is a large job. Yes. We yes. all of it. We, I mean, yeah. we, need, like, we cannot handle the sexual health issues. We cannot handle a whole lot of behavioral issues that are triggered by certain other traumas that they have gone through. Mm -hmm. For no yeah. important thing. So we don't have the entire circle that we have to build around this individual so that he can then become... I mean, it's not only independence, it's resilience. Resilience in your emotional regulation and all of that you have to be resilient. In fact, what happens after they leave escape? When they continue a life of isolation, then all this work will be completely wasted. Yeah. We don't have a system that will prevent that isolation from happening to these guys. And you know what happens with isolation. You will have mental health issues. So we have to build community. And I'm not talking about ghettoizing them by shoving them in some corner somewhere and sitting there. No, the communities have to be lively communities. People have to be part of it. They have to be exciting things going on. Art, uh, music, you know, whatever. Even yeah. even healthy eating. Yeah, the also, larger community also needs to come in. Like today in the video that you saw with the kids, they said we want people to come in. I mean, yeah. of course, we all have good days and bad days. You know, the other yeah. day somebody came and one of my students was just screaming, you know, like, like ah, just letting go. Yeah. So I'm okay with that. I mean, at home, I, I remember myself screaming my on top of my head if I feel that, you know, and somehow socially we are okay to do that in our clothes or what we call as private spaces. This is a private space for my students. And, they yes. shouldn't be, and you can't be judged. No, you should. I would say private or public, the way I manage, I, I kind of express my anger or I express as far as I'm not hurting. physically hurting another person. Not even if I'm hurting myself, I, I will say that that is their body, their right. As far as I'm not physically hurting another person, I allow anything else. And that ha change has to come into society. When you say inclusion, please understand the definition of inclusion. You know, when we are talking so much, like you said, it's all over social media. And the minute there is something like word on word on the day or down there, it's, you know, we are, we are ambushed with this, this yes. word. I, we are not ready for inclusion in India. I don't, I mean, I, I, I think so many other folk are struggling for inclusion, transgender, queer folk. This, this, this thing of inclusion is, we are not there, but we are yes. trying to Inclusion, I, I have, have um, parents reaching out to me. Actually, I was talking to somebody from Australia, a parent, a mom. She's the mother of uh, an adult with India autism, 22 years old. And she reached out to me for depression. And then the turn somehow, the talk somehow turned out to what was the trigger point. And then she was talking to me about what all has she achieved with her son and what still happens to bother her. And it was the sexual health education, which is still a 
in its very, very nascent stage, or in India, definitely a taboo, but, but Australia, back Australia, they have, they have got people who are sex therapists and who are into it, but still, she still finds it very difficult. So as you were talking about the girlfriend and the boyfriend concept, she is struggling a big, she's struggling it big time. So, so these are very, very important things. We reach out unless it hits us. We are just sitting down leisurely, enjoying our life, unless it hits up. I, I have not seen anybody very passionate. I'm really sorry, I'm not being judgmental, but I have seen very, very tiny population who is, even if not affected, are, I would say, not including, but a basic courtesy of human being, right? Of not discriminating, of not being judgmental. It starts this tiny sense of me being very, very inclusive, letting everybody be together, letting not anybody feel criminal for having a child who is just not the normal or not normal or normal. I have, I have enormous, many, many stories to share. Coming back to your space again, the positives and the negatives will keep, will keep yeah, <laughs> tilting to us. Yeah, what is it us? Yes. Um, so we heard about the beautiful creations. We heard Akshay, you talking about you creating an environment which gives them an outlet and they are able to create masterpieces. Can we replicate those environments? I would definitely like to get your brain out and try to magnify it, right? As to creating an environment where everyone becomes a part of it, right? And, and so beautiful creations. Those creations come back to the child and they feel happy. Can we not do it? What, what are the challenges? What do you say? The school, the system, the infrastructure, the parents, the family, many things. I have enormous stories. I want to hear from you. Okay. So I'll take that question, Shalini. Yes, very simply put, can we replicate the process? Yes, we can. Or can we replicate this? You know, the creation of the artwork. Yes, it can be replicated because there is a curriculum I spoke to you about. Now, curriculum is essentially process building. So which means mm -hmm. that if I'm going to go to the classroom as a teacher, then what what I should do and how I should do has been worked out to a certain extent. The lesson plans are given to you. You know how to take the students from one point to that point so that they can give you an end impact, like they can create that thing. All those things, yes, are more easier, you know, kind of to put in process. Now let's talk about the human aspect of this particular process. You know, there is there is this is like the creation of environment doesn't mean just creating a curriculum and dropping it over there. It's yeah. how you implement it. Because yes. this is very key to mm. the success ratio of what is going to happen in that environment. Over there, I think we struggle in India. Because there are no the professionals are not very intuitive to what we have to do. There is this, you know, this attitude that if I'm given something, I have to follow it like a yeah. Very it, rigid sort of thinking. But that's not how you deal with human beings. If I meet you and I don't know you that much and you are having an emotional breakdown, I will respond to you differently. I know her very well. We've been, you know, doing so many critical things together. We've shared many moments where we have had breakdowns multiple times. We both will deal with it differently. And I will respond yeah. to differently over here do you understand so as an educator when you say you know many people talk to me about replication i think the easiest thing that could be solved we both have solved we have put a process in place yeah okay we've got a curriculum in place i think that the one that we both are still struggling with is that holistic human connectedness which is very important for autism you know, kids on the spectrum come to know if you don't like them. You don't have to tell them that I don't Wait. like them. They have very that they Six just, immediately they know that this person is angry with me. This person does not like me. This person does not want to have me in their space at this point in time. It doesn't need to be told. Imagine working with somebody like that who has such a high level of intuition and your intuition is zero. How are you going to now create that holistic environment that I'm talking about? And it's a lot of work, Shalini. I am in and out with parents. Anima goes into meetings with parents. We have WhatsApp groups. I'm, I'm literally always on cue, connected with everything that is happening to make this possible. So we, we will need 
professionals who are willing to go that mile. We will need professionals who are intuitive. The implementation will have to be managed more effectively than it is in India. Need to be invested. And you also have to look at the model. When we have one teacher to three students, or at most four students, four yeah. students might even have a support teacher in the class. Economically, it may not make sense. But without that kind of a ratio, you cannot support the students effectively. No two children are going to be alike. That's not that they have autism. You know very well they are not going to be alike. We cannot even club them together based on cognitive ability because that's not the only thing that is making them different. Yeah. You have different behaviors, you have different compatibilities. You cannot just club any children and then say, okay, I can have 10 children or 15 children in the classroom. So this is not a model that makes money. That's why it is replicable, yeah. but you need support. You need support from your companies who should understand that I can talk about neurodiversity, but there's going to be no neurodiversity if I don't support the training. Right? Yeah. So you Get all that kind of support. It cannot just be one school sitting and trying to make a, a difference if the other systems are not in place. We can replicate this model, yes, 100%. But for that model to be successful, it needs a support. Hope it becomes a reality sooner. Our last question, a quick one. We see the paintings on the wall, since kaleidoscope wall. Are they going to places? Are you getting buyers so that it... it it adorns the wall of so many and gives a financial existence to the kids, to the artists. Yeah, I think that's the natural progression to how we are doing this, right? Because first it was like, you know, SK has had a very weird kind of journey. We started because I came from the art space. I was very passionate about vocational training. I wanted to look at sustainable livelihood. And then I realized that, okay, I have kids whose comprehension is sitting 10 years behind that, where it should be. And then I realized that that's not because they have autism. Everybody would go, oh, the child has autism and hence he can't do it. That's incorrect. Yeah. Autism has got nothing to do with comprehension. If you are severely struggling on the spectrum, yeah. I understand you are not able to cope with stimuli at all. Yes, the challenges exist. But that is why it's a spectrum disorder. There is possibility for you to create that kind of comprehension if you put them in the right environment. So we went into academic curriculums and into academic work as well, right? Then we started saying, all right, we have to look at livelihoods and we have to make those livelihoods sustainable. So our first case study was centered around what are the possible ways for us to, you know, get income for our working artists? What are the various ways that we can go out and we can get jobs? We can get commissions, we can do exhibitions, we can go to go the merchandise route. There, is, there are various possibilities, interior projects. There is such a lot of work out there. Now, how do we get this artist to go into that space and create a sustainable livelihood? I guess that is where we are trying to build our mechanisms more firmly. Because bear in mind, we have been in this space for nine years and just nine years we have been working in building curricula for art and academic and this is another thing that we are trying to now attach so it takes a lot of work i think anima can talk a bit about her experiences about how she has built work on that end yeah so when we talk about livelihood with art there are many more avenues than people normally think of when i mean normally conventional parents will think only stem subjects or only this and only that but with art you can not only sell the artwork as it is, you can also, uh, you know, license this artwork for design across various uh, merchandise. Like, for instance, Lifestyle took out our artwork and did a women's wear, men's wear, and a home center line with it. And it was a yeah. fan uh, yeah. line. I saw and that, yeah. And then we have, uh, it's not only that, we then go out on exhibitions. We do come, we get commissions for the art. We have corporates who have bought the artworks and then, you know, they, they, they buy a whole lot of artworks because they want to celebrate neurodiversity in the world. So well, we have wall projects we, we are doing. We have, we have wall projects that we are working on. So one entire wall mm -hmm. to the children's rest case, uh, creativity. We do things like this and they do bring in a significant amount of money for the artists because we mm -hmm. don't believe in the disability label ceiling. We break that. We are not selling our artworks at PP prices. We are selling them at reasonable prices. And we are getting the respect from the art world for that. People are seeking us out for these artworks because they're good, not because they're done by somebody with autism. 
so much i think if time was not the constraint because we do not want it to be very long we lose the interest of people right there is a bombardment of online talks happening so thank you so much i wish you both more power more colors on your wall and more professionals coming out and and showcase the whole world of what can be done and we talk about let us see how many of us are able to connect to the human being and be little tiny more inclusive the human side coming Uh, out of us thank you so much anima and akshi one more time and let the journey continue thank you so much